I do love a Ford Bronco. I mean, it's got my name on it for a start, but not all is as it seems with this one. But first, a bit of backstory. Here in California, the vintage Ford Bronco is something of a hipster icon. It's America's Land Rover analogue, a shape that invokes soft focus memories and hard-edged amnesia about just how rubbish the machines actually were. Mind you, most cars felt bigger when you were 10 and you probably didn't have to drive them. But nostalgia is a powerful drug, and folks old enough to succumb to that particular addiction are also old enough to hate spine-bending ergonomics and 1960s braking. And they don't fancy the new version. Thus, there are plenty of companies out there that will primp and improve an old-school Bronco to your taste, from mild to wild. But not a single one of them makes anything remotely like this. Because this is the Zero Labs Ford Bronco Carbon Edition, and it is pure electric. Now, obviously, the name gives it away a little bit, because this is a Zero Labs version of a Ford Bronco, which means that it has been completely reworked. Now, obviously, there's been some stylistic changes, but it's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery, which will give you up to 235 miles plus of pure electric range. It's got two motors giving it four wheel drive, and it can have up to 600 brake horsepower, which is probably enough. But power is nothing without control, so the old suspension has been junked, it's now fully independent, and it's got proper brakes on it. The thing is, when you're talking about this car, that's not even the special part, because if you see this, that's carbon fibre. These wings, carbon fibre. Doors, carbon fibre. Rear wheel arches, carbon fibre. Roof cut, you, you get the idea, it's all carbon fibre. But obviously, there's been many more changes. It's got the nostalgic silhouette with a space-age sense of lightness and a very gentle, sympathetic sense of smoothed-out custom. It's a Bronco remix, and it goes all the way through the car. But why? Well, I've got a man here who can explain a few things. It's Adam Rowe, the creator of Zero Labs, and he's not your average automotive boss man. So, Adam, what have you done to this Bronco? We perfected it. Uh, we started off really looking at the original steel. A lot of the panels didn't want to align. It was, uh, all of them are stamped, made in different factories, and so you really can't work with it. So we just thought, what would a perfect one look like if, if the designers back in the 60s had a chance to start all over again and said, what if I could just use new materials and build it from the very beginning, what would they do? And that's what we did. We, we went through all the panels, all the parts that were defective and shape, misshapen, scanned them, cleaned them up, and made them fit perfect with modern car tolerances, but still with the shape and the quality of the original uh, design. Because it's got the same silhouette as it used to, right? But this is all carbon fiber. Is yes. everything, everything's carbon? This is all carbon fiber. It's both A and B level. Um, you know, this, this hood, for example, weighs about 80, 85 pounds in original steel. It weighs about 26 pounds now. So it gives a lot of light, uh, which is important for electric. It also doesn't rust. So we're on the beach. That's kind of important for a lot of those cars, which are known to become rust traps. Yeah, yeah. And then the front, you've obviously gone with an electric vibe by having no grill. Yeah, we wanted to sort of send a little bit of a signal that something was different. But I mean, the design of the shape, the insets were very classic and uh, borrowed from the original, but we also wanted to say this is different. This is not the same original one that it was. And so we borrowed the shape. You recognize it as a Bronco, but there's just a subtle nod that something's different about this one. Yeah, yeah. And the difference is obviously that it's got a big electric drivetrain. Why go electric? Why not just give it a bigger motor? Why do you want to do electric cars? Because it's going to end up this way. Like there's, there's, when you're looking at all the problems that come from uh, classic cars, reliability, range, breakdowns, relative highway speed, upgradability, um, you know, maintenance, all of them come back to the fact that electric is just a better system. And that's when the cars really started. It's simple, there's less moving parts, uh, you can be easily upgraded. And what's exciting about it is what this is now, it can become a much, much better car five years from now without changing that much, changing a few things, but the rest of the car will, can stay drivable and serviceable for 10, 15 more years. So if we look round it, this, this whole thing is, so there's LED lighting, there's, yeah. there's lots of little tweaks that you've done. There is, I mean, a lot of the, the main thing is like, with the carbon is look at the gap tolerances. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are impossible with steel. You know, you'd have like one millimeter down here and 11 millimeters up there and the hinges, 
would be at different places. So this is really like the more perfect version of what would they have done if they had the design. If you're moving down the car, like what, what else has been going on? So it's got LED turn indicators, but you've, it's all quite subtle. Yeah, we, the, the pillow patterns of the LED lights are very traditional looking, so they, you wouldn't know by looking at it, it is. Also, all of the metal treatments, we tried a bunch of things. We tried nickel plating, we tried other things. We ended up with a modified gun metal that they use on handguns, which is both durable and kind of looks cool. And, uh, but it's extremely durable because at the end of the day, you want to have this car for a lot of years. So where's the battery gone? So the battery is in between the axles. It's between the front axle and here. So it's perfectly centered in between, which is really where you want your center of balance to be for an electric car. You put a bunch of batteries in the front, it's going to have oversteer, it's going to have uh, roll center problems. You put them in the back, it's going to have the same thing. And we tried that. And it just, it, you felt the weight of every turn and it really affected the performance and the drive quality. So we just said, what if we could fix that, balance it perfectly, not have anything get in the way of the motors and just let it be as efficient as it can, as powerful as it can, but give no real clue that it's electric. There's nothing about this by looking at it you would even know. And is that important? Is that something that appeals to you? I think a lot of our clients from the, from the aesthetic perspective want to have a subtle elegance. Like they want to have, they don't want to have Ferraris and really kind of like loud look at me cars. They want to have like this type of car like this, which is absolutely beautiful, but they're not announcing it to the world. To, to everyone else, it's just a beautiful classic. What's your favorite part about it? I think the fact that it's still recognizable from any distance as a, as a classic Bronco. And yet so many parts have been modernized. We've tried to really be faithful to the design, the lines, the shape, and the original intention, I think, of the design of the, of the original designers, but we've improved it. We've made it better. Like if they could make a car now with that design, what materials would they use? How would they solve those problems? And we tried to imagine ourselves as what doing what they would do. All of the details we try to add, most of them, I would say, are designed from the perspective of, I think I remember that, but I'm not sure I do. Yes. You know? Because if if we draw attention to the new things, it contrasts the old things. So we want all the new things to blend as if they were made yesterday and you just kind of forgot about it. Okay. Can we have a look inside? Yeah. Oh wow. So, Adam, talk me through this. Major difference, I mean, starting with the obvious, is that the transmission tunnel has been removed. And what that does is it lowers about 25% in the interior space because there's a big, huge amount of space that we're just not using. And so we flattened it and it makes the little car, because Broncos aren't huge, much, much bigger. And you don't miss it. It's just like, it kind of felt like it should have been like that. Um, we use this flat floor as much as we can. We ran a bunch of our cabling under the channels. Uh, a lot of the other things have been upgraded. We have a newly designed dash with a bit of an inset. The original ones didn't have this, but because everyone has cell phones now, yeah. it's sort of weird not to have it. Um, we did a bamboo interior for this one. This is a sort of a white uh, leather, but what's nice about the bamboo is it looks fresh and clean yeah. uh, all the time. Kind of got a Scandi feel to it. Yeah, it's just, it makes it look new and modern, but at the same time, it never really abandons its classic feel. Like what I love is that sometimes people will say, I love the way they did bamboo and in inlays back then. And I'm like, yeah, it's a classic, you know? <laughs> they don't remember that it didn't have that. And that's kind of exactly our point. Like you never really want to give up the fact that this is new and this is old. Um, another thing that's changed since that is we have, we used to have manual transmissions and, and transfer cases. The, as nice as it was, the problem is that it really wasn't very efficient and it's also hard to drive. So we have now an automatic transmission, it's all digital. We also, to keep the feeling of a transfer case, we added a digital transfer case. So if it's in neutral, if you're being towed, uh, full high, just like a normal off-road 4x4 uh, for both motors. If you wanna drive just with one motor, you move that forward, it's a little bit more efficient. So you can just choose. Yeah, and if you're driving uh, uh, off-road, you can push them both to L, which is low, which gives you a little bit more resolution when you're climbing over rocks uh, and things like that. Um, integrated center console is completely different now. Obviously it's very flat. We keep all of our stuff in here and there's kind of a secret document holder down in there. So you don't really see it. Um, same as before, we always wanna hide anything that's technology that looks like it's not from this era, gotcha. right? So we have a head unit back here, which is connected to the backup camera, but we hide it. So we never wanna announce it. The digital gauge cluster is an upgraded version of the one we had last time. Um, auto dimming sensor, rear view mirror, 
and uh, all the same touch button before. The same finish on the outsides, on the inside. So this is like a gunmetal finish. So it's very durable. You can't smudge it with fingerprints. So it can last for a very long time. And this whole thing is very modular. So like the old ones, the original, you can take this all apart, service it and put it back together again. What kind of people are buying these cars? I think it's people that had this car in their childhood and it represents something to them. It represents a part of their life that was important, an era that they want to remember because these cars are going to be forgotten. And the other part of it is they also want that car, but not really suffer the technology of something from 50 years ago. You know, if you drive a, a classic pure, like the way it was back then, you know, your zero to 60 is 40 seconds. Your steering is out of control at 65. It's kind of terrifying. It's not what you remember. So this is more like how they wanted to remember it, more of an idealized version of their past, and but still allows them to use it as a daily driver. Talking of driving, can I have a go? Yeah, of course. Now, beaches offer a very limited idea of what a car feels like on the road. So we took the Zero Labs out to some very pretty Californian back roads to see if this Bronco was actually any good or just Instagram pretty. And it turns out this isn't your average upgrade. It feels very stable. But what have we got in terms of motors and suspension and all that good stuff? So com compared to the last generation, which I think you drove in 2019, um, we, we, we realized the shortcomings of the old system. And so we upgraded everything, not, not to make it an electric version of the old car, but just to make it a better performing car for today, this era, because the conditions have changed, the speeds have changed, the way people drive has changed, so we made it work for that. This, this car is built on our, the latest generation of our platform, which is a fully integrated uh, system with independent front and rear suspension, uh, computer controlled, rack and pinion, um, dampened for higher speeds. Yeah, because if I turn this into this corner, and go a little quicker, it actually handles. The steering's not precise, but the way that the car turns into a corner is actually a lot more positive, isn't it? They're big, tall, off-center cars, so you know you have, you have to take into account your, your center of gravity and your roll center. So what we did to, to fix all that is we made the battery directly in the center. So it's low center of gravity in between the two motors, which is really where you want any EV to be. So how much horsepower is, and torque is, is this car making, is it? And can you change it according to a customer preference or is it sort of set? I mean, out of the box, it is it 600 horsepower. But, you know, what we found from our from our clients driving is that was pretty terrifying. It was like a, a rocket on a jet ski. You know, it was just too much power for its base. So we dialed it back. We played with it a lot to get it really comfortable. So now it's more like a, a confident yacht. Uh, where it, it sort of lets you know it can go fast, but it doesn't keep jerking ahead. It seems like I'm going there because I can, but not in a sort of desperate, jumpy way that's sort of twitchy, yeah. uh, which is characteristic of a lot of new EVs. You know, it, it's still a classic car. It still has to have that sort of constrained elegance and and c it's a comfort more than more than speed. So you find that balance of like, I want to know I can, but I don't really feel like I need to like, you know, jump to light speed to get to a parking space. You know, you, you have the power if you need it to overtake on highway speeds. Um, let's, let's try it. I mean, if I just, if I just floor it, you know, that has got enough power to do an overtake quite happily, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've taken this car and other cars like it, 120, 130, which is <laughs> that no. No. Insane for like a, a car that's shaped like a dumpster. <laughs> the interesting thing here is that the Zero Labs electric Bronco is not actually a seamless, sterile electric car. Yes, there's only one speed, but there are high and low ratios for both motors. Handy if you want to off-road, and you can disengage either motor for more efficiency via the levers in the center console. There's a load of easy torque, but the car moves around, it breathes, it needs actual driving. If you just plant your foot and head for a corner, you'll crash it. But there's something extra special about using this electric car as a machine and not just a conveyance. It's more involved. It's always about integrating, you know, future tech or next generation technology and about user experience, about how these things feel. 
Now, a lot of people think of EVs as being dull and boring and just fast. It's not going to go around the corner at 900 miles an hour, but that's fine because I don't necessarily want to do it. How do you integrate tech and still have this kind of charm? Why doesn't it feel emotionless? I mean, that's kind of the entire reason I created the company, right? It, it's really to find that balance between how do you know it's something that you respond to in the past that still makes you feel that, while at the same time not being limited by the technology that that was created with? And, and how do you integrate what's best about the future, but not betray what era this car is part of? And so, you know, to me, this is essentially fits the definition of a time machine. It's something that allows you to travel back to the past and remember those feelings, remember that era and the lines and the shapes and the forms and, um, you know, the lack of aerodynamics. <laughs> but at the same time, you're also experiencing like a very advanced computer assisted power system that is going to be more prominent in the future. And you can travel between those two eras. And it, it does mess with your head. Like you drive these long enough and you're kind of confused. Like, am I in the past or is this the future? Or is this the future of the past? Like it's, you, you have this kind of beautiful tension between not really fully understanding what era you're in, but that's kind of its magic too. Like you never want to betray that this is a, a full EV with a giant tablet and the word EV written on it. There's no, there's no betrayals whatsoever that this is an electric car. Um, it never says it anywhere in the car. We've hidden all the screens except for the gauge cluster. We added all the functions and designs from the original gauge. Truthfully, if people had exactly what they remember from the past, they'd be pretty disappointed. And that's kind of how nostalgia works. And it's nostalgia a, being such a powerful drug, yeah. the addiction sort of blurs the memory. It does. So it's funny, this feels like a very mechanical car. I know that sounds weird to talk about an EV, but the steering isn't perfect. It's got a slight vagueness to it. The way the suspension works, it's quite a firm car, but I suppose that's to stop it going up on two wheels and killing you immediately. But there's a rhythm to it. The movie Blade Runner, the first one, that had a huge influence on me as a kid. And, and it's because it wasn't all like Buck Rogers, everybody wears the same outfit. There's no such thing as zippers in the future. It's a blend of flying cars, flying cars and bikes. And it is that blend of like past and future kind of live together. Old things don't disappear in the future. Yeah, That's exactly. That's what I always think. It's, it's not like we start again, there's no reset. You'll still have, you know, a history of things. Honestly, I could talk to Adam for hours about, well, pretty much anything. But after a good stint driving this electric Bronco, it's hard not to be convinced if you're even vaguely interested in this sort of thing. Some people aren't, and that's fine. There are plenty of petrol-powered options, but Zero Labs have a unique attitude to what makes a car feel special. And that's not about panel gaps and zero to 60 times. But then again, this kind of attention to detail doesn't come cheap. The Carbon Edition weighs in upwards of $450,000, which would make anyone cough. I've driven several different kinds of serious resto mod over the past few years, and I've been completely convinced that they are my favorite kind of car because they basically look like the cool old stuff, but they've got the performance and the reliability of new things. But this Zero Labs Ford Bronco is one step beyond. It's not a resto mod, it's a future mod because it's got that vintage look, but next generation upgrades. The thinking here is sophisticated, and subtle. There's a basic respect for the Ford Bronco that's then been shot through with technological passion. Yes, it is a little bit niche and it's quite expensive, but when you get to this level of quality, it's less about being a car and more about being a rolling piece of automotive artwork. And I think the world is a better place for it.